In this video, I'm gonna show you the best method to do focus stacking in Adobe Photoshop. Before we go right into it, I need to explain what the focus stacking is. Focus stacking is a method in which you combine multiple pictures with the focus being in a different place to create something which lenses or cameras cannot do internally. So for example, if you want to take a picture of a landscape and a, of a big tree log in front of the lake and in front of the mountains, no matter how small you can close the aperture in your lens, you're never going to get everything sharp throughout. So the best thing to do would be do focus stacking. I you take a picture of a focus on the log, another picture of a focus on the lake, another picture of a focus on the mountains, and then combine all those three photos into one picture which is sharp throughout. In this example, I'm gonna show you product photography and how to photograph the object with a very shallow depth of field set in the camera and then combine those images together to create still very shallow depth of field but the product being sharp throughout so here we are i have taken uh, eight pictures of this camera and lens combo with 50 millimeter f 1.4 so to do this i have moved my focus point from the front of the lens to further along the lens towards the camera and then on the camera and last eight picture I have actually focused on the viewfinder on top at the end. All these images and the final Photoshop file are downloadable in the link below this video. So if you want to have a go actually with the same files and see how it how it works, please feel free to download them from the link below this video. Okay, let's jump right in. Firstly, we're gonna put those eight photos straight into Lightroom to do very, very quick uh, preparation before doing the focus stacking in Photoshop. You don't have to do this way. You can actually go with a raw file straight into uh, Photoshop, but then it creates a bit of more uh, longer uh, workflow in my opinion. So I've imported all eight photos here. And as you can see, they all here, and you can see the focus point moving alongside the, the camera and the lens. Um, as you can see also, this, um, the image is not exactly the same place. I have done this on purpose. I have shot these images handheld, not on the tripod. So there's a small variation of where actually the camera is. So firstly, we're gonna do quick adjustments. I'm gonna go last picture first and do quick brightness, highlights, contrast. Very, very basic quick adjustments. Um, also, I'm gonna make a foreground a little bit darker just to bring those reflections back a bit and i'm gonna rotate a photo slightly to get the camera straight and that's it once i got that done i'm gonna select all the photos in a sequence by holding shift key and clicking on the first so they all now selected all eight of them and i'm gonna click on sync button and i'm gonna leave all of this selected and synchronized that's gonna apply all the adjustments i've done to that one picture to all of those I've selected together all eight of them. Now I have this done. Let's right click all eight selected images and go to edit and open as layers in Photoshop. That's gonna launch Photoshop and bring all eight photos into one Photoshop file with eight layers. I like to rename the layers to numbers so I know what I'm looking at. So let's quickly rename these layers to numbers. That's done. Now to align this camera to be in exact spot throughout, throughout all these layers. This is a very simple and automatic method. I'm gonna select all the layers in the layers panel and go to edit and auto align layers. I'm gonna leave all on automatic here and just click okay. What Photoshop has done here is move the layers to align all the visible sharp edges and shapes to be in the same place on all of the layers. So because layers have been moved, uh, this process can create empty spaces around the edges. So to get rid of them, simply just apply a bit of a crop. You can apply automatic layer blending via edit and auto blend layers, but that only works well when blending simple uh, images, maybe something with two or three layers and not hugely different from layer to layer. In this example, this super shallow depth of field makes auto blending very unpredictable and doesn't give results I want. 
for most of the time I do it personally manually because I've got a full control over what's happening. What we're gonna do, we're gonna make a hole in every layer from the top, revealing only the sharp parts of the camera on the photos. So the first photo, the sharp is the rim of the lens, but then the second photo is the focusing ring. So what I would do is to add layer mask to every single layer. And before I explain how it works and what it does, let's add layer masks. Is this little icon at the bottom of the layers panel, uh, layer mask, which we're just gonna add to every single layer. As you can see, it adds the, that white box to every layer next to the image. There we go. So layer mask, layer mask is this uh, overlay here, which is white and anything white overlaying this image is visible. So we can see all of the image now, but if I take a brush and make it black, which it is black here and paint on that layer mask, which is white at the moment, it's gonna make a hole. So anything black on the layer mask is transparent, anything white on layer mask is visible. This way, if I want to go back, I can just take a white brush and paint again on the layer mask and revert the picture, the transparency to where it was. With this method, I can make a hole in every single layer going to the bottom and work very accurately on every single layer. And then if I wanna fine tune it, I can go back with the brushes. So, okay, let's do it. So firstly, let's get a brush and make a hardness from here to 0%. So the softest edge as we possibly can. It's not very important if it's, if it's not very accurate erasing because you can always go back. So let's select the first layer mask and the first two layers. So let's take a black, black brush uh, and paint on this first layer mask of the first layer of on what's actually not sharp in the image. So we're gonna go from the, from the lens here and I'm gonna go through whole camera because I want a camera to be sharp and I know that every picture underneath has got a different part of this camera sharp. So just very roughly, if you can see, this is actually what we erased from this layer, from the top layer. And now we can see what's in the layer underneath. So the focus ring is sharp. I'm gonna go one down. So I'm gonna select the layer mask, not the image in the, in the panel here. And again, I'm gonna paint with the black brush on the layer mask on all the parts of the camera which are not sharp. And that again makes the hole in an image to reveal what's underneath. And we're gonna go one down again and repeat this process on every single layer underneath. I missed some bit here on one of the images. The easiest way to find what you missed is the selecting the layers and making them invisible. So this is layer six. Uh, I've got a I missed a little bit. And now if I enable everything again, that's our yeah, that's our image. So this is it. Very very simple process. All you do is make a hole in every layer, revealing picture underneath, and each of those pictures underneath has got a sharpness in a different place and that's how you create your focus stacking quickly and accurately and of course you can go back and revert your actions quite easily by painting white or black on the layer masks and this is it from me i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial if you did please give me a thumbs up if you like this kind of videos uh, photography video reviews and tutorials please consider subscribing thanks for watching and uh, see you next time white gonna be gray what do you think oh i'm gonna go back in this video in this video in this in this video in this video in this video in this video i'm gonna show you the best method to do focus stacking